but it's you, Christ, that lives inside. Lord, I surrender my everything to you. Oh, yeah. I'm yielding completely through and through. Can I say it again? No, no. Lord, it's not my will. But oh, let no will be done. It's no more. save you? How many remember when you were filled with the Holy Ghost the day or the night that you received it? How many of you can say, Lord, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. I'll never forget how you brought me out. I'll never forget how you brought us through this pandemic that we're still in the midst of. How many remember the goodness of God? Come on and help me sing it for just a minute. Your hands together.
shout glory. Come on, shout glory another time. Amen. Our bishop is coming with the word of the Lord on this morning. Let's receive Bishop Clifton Jones by saying, preach, Bishop, and we know you will. Praise the Lord to the saints, and greetings to everybody else. You know, it's been a while since I uh, stood before an audience. I've been sitting in my bedroom, living room, places, talking to people. But I got two or three sitting out there. I just wonder, is there anybody in here that needs some information? Okay, okay, okay. Before I commence to do that, let me say this. Let me say this and listen close. I would rather die believing God than to run in fear from anything else. Yeah, that's, it. I said, that's exactly what I said. Uh, we are in some troublesome times, but never lose your faith in God. Yeah. See, admit you have no control over what's going on, but you do have a God. Woo! Good God in there. I want to talk about one, uh, one of the words in my talk today is one of the last words that the human race want to hear. They would rather hear you talk about anything than to talk about dying. I want to talk a little bit about dying today. In fact, my subject is why dying is a must. Why dying is a must. My first attempt is to show it from the positive standpoint. In St. John chapter 12 and verse 24, Jesus gives us an outline, input, insight, knowledge of his diet. Maybe three of you in here call yourself one of Jesus' disciples. <laughs> if you are a follower of Jesus, then you need to learn from Jesus how to follow. And not only should we learn from him how to follow, we need to learn why we do what we do. Back to the word dying. Why dying? Well, I've said it in this pulpit before, and I want to say it again. Dying physically is the results of failure to obey God. Uh, that, that didn't go too well. Let me try it this way. Dying in Bible days, the beginning came about because somebody saw something they wanted more than they did to obey God. That didn't go too good. Let me try it this way. Dying is the result of one getting what he wants to the neglect of what God said. Pretty cool. Uh, maybe I better try it one more time somewhere. Dying is the fruit of one choosing that which he or she could do without. Well, maybe I'll say that again. Dying is the fruit, the result, the consequences of one getting 
what he and she could have done without. Hell will be populated with people who saw things they wanted and refused to do without them. They wanted it so bad, they went and got it. It made them feel so good. They enjoyed it so much, they declare, I can't quit it. So you're going to hell, so what? I'm having a ball right now. So dying is the consequences, again, of disobedience. In Jesus' statement, he gives a better picture of dying and explain why he had to die. Thank you, Jesus. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much much fruit. So Jesus dying was to produce offspring. I wish he had about three in here today. He died to produce offspring. Well, well, brother, why did he have to why did he have to die? Well, the pattern he set forth in the beginning by the name of Adam failed to obey and caused the death of all of us. So in order to get the dead back to life, somebody that had life had to do the dying and then put in us what he has in him so we could come alive. My God, thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for that. Yeah, I was sort of thinking the other day, God has a lot of confidence in himself. To move inside of somebody like me, and maybe one or two of you, messed up as we were, as prone as we are to doing evil, you're going to move inside of me? As big a liar as I am, you're going to move inside of me? I curse like a one-eyed sailor, you're going to move inside of me? I hold with anybody that wants to hold. You mean to tell me you're moving me? And I don't drink for two ways as by myself and with somebody. And you're moving inside of me? Jesus brought the right kind of life in order to die the right kind of death in order to produce the right kind of fruit. If the seed, Jesus, had been polluted, he could not have produced holy fruit. But since he is holy, he lived holy, he was born holy, he died holy, he got up holy, he ascended holy, he came back holy, he'll never be holy. So when he moves in, he brings what he has in him. Don't, don't let me go too long. If you think I've gone long enough, you raise your hand again. Uh, why would Jesus compare himself to a seed? Well, I know most of us in here are country, but some of us are country and ignorant when it comes to uh, plants and nuts and seeds and all that. See, you put the seed in the ground, the moisture in the ground causes the shell that the seed in to enlarge and it cracks open. And then the, the real goody that you want springs up through the dirt and produces a crop. Jesus said, sin killed all from Adam unto my resurrection. But I'm come and I'm the seed. Once they get the seed in them, hi, 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 hi. I know some of you wonder why we insist on you being baptized in water. When you go down in that water, it's a demonstration that you believe that what Jesus did was for you. And upon your barrel, you die with 
him upon your rising up out the water, you can walk with him. I wonder if there anybody in here can think about the day you went down in his name and the change that came about your life. I'm not the same. I look the same. But there's a power on the inside. There's a joy on the inside. There's a deliverance on the inside. There's a hope on the inside. time, son. You'll be there when you get there. Hmm. Fall in the ground and die. See, he was actually talking about his death. Just as Adam volunteered to do evil, Jesus volunteered to do right. I, I went back last night to make sure it was there. I went over to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. God formed man from the dust of the earth and he breathed into him the breath of life. If you don't mind, the living seed, the life-giving source, the eternal quality, the divine likeness, the connection. He breathed in him the breath of life, and man became a living soul. What do you mean he became a living soul? Wasn't he already a living soul? No, Adam killed his soul. Jesus came to bring his soul back to life. No wonder we feel sometimes feel something moving in us, and we can't fully explain it. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if we, before we leave here today, somebody feels something invading him or her on the inside and said, my God, I'm so glad he didn't leave me where I was, didn't leave me in the condition I was in. I'm glad he didn't cut me off. I'm glad he didn't turn his back on me. But when I call upon his name, he heard my cry and came to my rest. You. In fact, I'm getting ready to tell him, thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for raising me up. Thank you for bringing me back alive. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh. That's, that's one of the things for sure. You don't have to tell a person when they receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You don't have to tell them. I think so. I seem like I got something. Stay there a little longer, brother, because you got to go through some stuff. So you you got to die. See, that's the point I'm trying to. I'm gonna try to end on is the fact that we had to die. And Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, I believe it's verse number 11, he said, I died, no, that's further down. He said, I die daily. What do you mean you die daily? Every day I see something that goes against my natural feeling. Sometimes I see things I want, but I know I can't have it and glorify God at the same time. I I wonder if uh, any witnesses in here have heard something knocking at your brain door telling you to go where you used to go, do what you used to do and then something answered that call, said no way Jose, he paid too much for you, for you to let him down now, this is your chance to rise up and tell yourself, not in a million years, I will not let him down, I will not disappoint him, I will I will not turn my back on him. I will not disobey him. Hallelujah. 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 Those of you that are trying to make noise, y'all be quiet like the rest of them. Amen. That won't take a thing from me. I'm so glad I don't have to depend on what you, whether you said amen or not. Because some of you can't say amen. You done played so much until you're ashamed to say amen. You let your flesh run so wild you can't say amen. But when you train your body, you can cry all you want to, plead all you plead. But my mind is made up. My heart is sick. I'm going to glorify him. He's worthy. Well, I, this 
has nothing to do with anybody in here, but the other day I was trying to help somebody, and I told them, it's a good thing when you do something that's not right that it bothers you. That's a good sign. That's a sign God is still in the neighborhood. But when you can do something evil, wicked, ungodlike, mean, contentious, and filthy, and feel good about it, God been gone so long, and the bad thing about it, he didn't leave his address. Oh. When you can do wrong and feel good, that's a sign you've been doing wrong so long, you forgot to hold on to that which is good. But when you can do wrong and it bothers you, it troubles you, it makes you sick on your very stomach and so ashamed of your weak and ignorant behavior, you want to cry unto God, Lord, if anybody can help me, you can. And if anybody need help, I do. Don't leave me me the way I am. If you ever woke up a sick and sinking soul, wake me up, stir me up, raise me up, hold me up. I need help, Lord. Help my mind, help my heart, help my outlook, help my attitude, help my disposition, help me. Someone come running in here. In a few minutes, both doors swing open. It's a bad in the building, a bad in the building. You think folks are sitting there like this? Huh. I'm going to leave some space for the bad and check with you later on because I don't have any bad equipment. Hallelujah. My God, I want you to see Jesus came knowing why he came. He said the thief cometh but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. He said, I lay down my life, but I take it up again. Don't listen to what Mr. Swoon said. He said Jesus did not actually die on the cross but he was overcome by the excruciating pain of the nails and the heat of the Palestinian sun and he gave in and passed out and when they placed him in that cool sepulchre he revived and got up that's what Mr. Swoon said in Revelation 1 and 18 Jesus had a different story he said I am he that liveth and was dead behold I am alive forevermore and I have the keys K-E-Y-S to death and to hell where did you get the keys in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse number 14 for as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood he himself likewise took part of the same that he might destroy him that had the power of death which is the devil I got news for you friend the devil had been successful all down through the years and when he thought he had people angry enough to put Jesus to death he thought he was getting rid of Jesus he didn't know it was a setup you go on and kill me and my death will represent all men my death will pay the debt of all men my death will just be temporary in three days I rise again for no man taking away my life I have the power to lay it down and the power to take it up again. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty power that he had in himself. And now he put it in me. Whew. Oh, slow down, Joan. You're not 16. Slow down. Slow down, boy. My Jesus earned his reputation. He earned his name. In the book of Philippians chapter number 2 and verse number 8, and being found in the fashion of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient even unto the death of the cross. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name. Who is higher than coronavirus? <laughs> 
is higher than intoxication, is higher than fornication, is higher than witchcraft, is higher than drunkenness. You want some real power, you need some Holy Ghost power. When pressure comes against you, rather than giving in, call upon his name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Jesus, I'm over here and I need some help. Jesus, I'm over here. I need a touch. Well, I got 10 more minutes or five. What somebody say? Lord, how much he earned his name. He, you want to earn your name? Live sanctified wherever you are. Live clean wherever you are. Clean in the home. Clean in the community. Clean on the job. Clean downtown, cross town, uptown, in the air, on the ground. Clean when you're by yourself, when you're with somebody. Be clean. I didn't say mean, be clean. And when a thought crossed your mind that is a filthy thought, rebuke yourself for letting that kind of traffic come through here. Shame on you to let that wicked, evil, bitter, resentful, hostile thought come through here. I can't think like that. I belong to Jesus. I'm blood wise. I'm spirit filled. I'm sanctified. I owe him my life. I'm sorry, Lord, for letting that thought come through my mind. Creating me a clean heart. Give me a right spirit. I want to be holy. No man. Hebrews, I'm sorry, Philippians 2.10 declare that the name of Jesus is above, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Now, you may not do it today, but one day you're going to have to do it. I'd rather volunteer than do it. I went today, shame on you, gentlemen, and I looked at an old song that churches don't sing anymore. Must Jesus bear the cross alone? Let the whole world go free. No, that's a cross for everyone. Uh, that's why I want to close on your and my cross. See, our cross is not made out of wood. Sometimes I call where some of the most potent, powerful, nose-grabbing, mind-bending perfume and cologne. And one swift of it up your nasal passage makes you take a second look at who's wearing it. Say, wow. See, that's our cross. Our cross is when we're confronted with the possibility of telling the truth or lying. Rush on, John. Get in a hurry. Run past that. Don't, don't, don't explain that too well, because that's where I live. Run on past that. Put your hand behind your ear. Shake your mic one time. <laughs> My cross. I got one, but there's another one work with me. Seem more appealing than the one I got. I guess so. Well, you don't warm down. See, you treat. Always remember, farmers, when your grass don't seem as green as your neighbor's grass, you might need to fertilize it. <sighs> don't lose your soul over something you can do without. Uh. Did somebody say, say that again? Maybe I better say it this way. Don't lose your soul uh, over something you can do without. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, listen, the Bible does not cut corners. It brings it like it really is. I'm on my way to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 
and verse number nine. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators. See, what a, uh, we understand a fornicator is two people engaging in sexual activity. But the Bible has a much broader sense than that. Anybody that's doing anything that is not legalized by God, that person falls under the head of fornication. If it's worship of another God, trying to replace the only God with something that looks like it is going to become God, that's for, the Bible calls it fornication. See, spiritual fornication is just as detrimental as sexual fornication. See, it involves more than one thing. See, you cannot go against God uh -huh, and expect to satisfy God when you put something in the place of God and spend more time with it, it than you do with God, then you think he ought to be happy about that? And may I say this in case I never talk to you again. Please, I'm talking to folk that's trying to be saved now. Please do not go hours, weeks, months, and days and can't feel God's presence nowhere. Don't live so far from God that you can't feel him wherever you are. Driving down the highway in your car, you ought to be able to feel God. Uh -huh. And every now and then you ought to say something to him. Let him know, Lord, I wouldn't have what I have had it not been for you. I thank you for not being ashamed of me. I thank you for not walking away from me. I thank you for not cutting me off. I thank you for abiding in my spirit. Lord, I thank you for letting me feel the fire burning right now. Glory, you are the best thing ever happened to me. I get real joy when I call upon your name. I get a real lift when I bless your name. I feel a burning within when I just call your name. Jesus! That was a, that was a bunch of people calling him one time and guess what? They, cried, they want to hush. And my Philosophy is, if someone tell you to hurt, get louder. I think we, we've hushed enough already. Huh. We've let life's difficult to shut us up. Some of us got bruises and bumps and knocks at our house, and we punish God when we get to church. The way I felt and the way things going in my house, how can I praise you? Praise him in spite of what's going on. The devil, you can pull out the best shot you got, but my heart is fixed, my mind is made up. I owe him a praise from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. When I look at what he did to get me out of what I was in, something down inside of me said he word when I had no say he came when I had no way to pay my debt. He hung to keep me from having to hang. He died to keep me from having to die. He got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. So he told me to call upon him in the day of trouble and he would deliver me. Jesus, help my mind. Jesus, help my heart. God. Jesus, help my outlook. Jesus, help my intake. Jesus, help my condition. Jesus, wake up my spirit. Jesus, set my soul on fire. Help me. I'm not finished, but I'm going to quit. Just on my way to quitting, understand this. The more we say no to what our flesh wants to do, the stronger we become in our relationship with him and the more we die. See, dying is not my suggestion. In St. Matthew chapter 24, I'm sorry, 26, no, that's wrong. 
16, as here, 16, 24, as here. Matthew 16, 24, Jesus said, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Deny himself. See, he knew, as sure as we walk on planet Earth, the crave of our human appetite will try to dominate us. More people are in trouble with God today simply because the thing they felt they wanted, they didn't have enough control over themselves to say you can't have it. And as a result, they got it, and now they've dis distanced themselves from God and want to make it appear that somebody else is to blame. Brother, if you're not where you ought to be in God, blame yourself. Hallelujah. Because I believe this. If you and I get where we ought to be, God can move what's in our way. And guess what? If he chooses not to move it, he can give us strength to climb it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And if we don't climb it, he'll give us boldness to go around it. And on your way around it, you look as if you thought you had me, didn't you? I forgot to tell you I had help. Uh, I called him a few minutes ago. In fact, if you move one muscle, I'm going to call him again. Whew. Glory! <laughs> and please, if you are a visitor and don't, and don't need to waste your energy talking about ah, that don't make sense, all that hollering. See, if you know it that quickly, and I've been here as long as I have, been hollering for years, and I don't know it. Glory! Not a one of us in here received the baptism of the Holy Spirit like this. Every one of us had our mouth open. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Our mouth was open. And every now and then you know, ought to open your mouth. That pressure upon your mind, waiting heavy on your heart, you ought to open your mouth. Said if anybody can help me, he can. If anybody need help, I do. And I'm not going to be satisfied until he moves. Jesus! John, you think I got enough? Okay. Will you stand with me, please? Father, none of us in here know what day you're coming for your church. But many of us believe you are coming because you said you are, were coming. And we want to thank you now for what you've done to give us the possibility of being ready. Help us to die daily, Lord. Help us to turn down offers that appears to be good, but they'll take us away from you. Deliver us from anything and everything that'll bring a breach into our relationship with you. You're the master. You deserve our utmost best. Help us to live so that it will be pleasing in your sight to walk before you in a manner that will glorify your name, covered by your blood, holding up the blood-stained banner. Help us, oh God, to shine in this dark day that those who walk in darkness can behold the glorious light of liberty and turn before it is everlasting too late. Those who never met you, Lord, let them get a glimpse of you by the way we live and the life we practice. Cover us, we pray. And as we're blessed by you, make us a blessing to someone else. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. While you're standing, I want you to use your sober mind. Ask yourself one pointed question. If Jesus would come now, would that come and be to take me home with him? 
or leave me behind. That's a horrifying thought that one of these days this life is coming to an end. And only those who have lived in agreement with his revealed word will be accepted. The others will hear tell, depart from me. I don't know you. Friend, there's nothing more important in life than getting right with God. Nothing. Nothing. What about uh, uh, getting a million dollars? <laughs> when you draw your last breath, you will have spent your last dollar. I often think about the, the money they dumped in a casket, and the man got, got up and got, took his hat and got the money out and wrote a check. And they're going to scold him and scorn him and mock him. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Taking the money, I, he said, well, if he can spend the money, he can cash the check. So the check was good. Friend, this ought to frighten me, you, and everybody else. The possibility of le leaving this life without hope. Leaving this life and got to stand before God. And the good thing about it, he will not need anyone else to tell him about me. There's nothing about me that he doesn't know. There's nothing I ever done he didn't see. There's no thought that will cross my mind he did not read. So don't, sweeping it under the rug is just for your conscience to make you feel good that somebody else thinks you are good. But God keeps a good record. He wants us to be holy. And I got news for you. That's the only way he can receive us unto himself. If you're here today, been straddling the fence, playing around, off and on, in and out, cold as a frog belly in Alaska. Don't know the last time God touched you and know the last time you tried to touch him. Something wrong with that picture. There's something wrong with that picture. Your relationship with Jesus is the most important thing you have. He's not going to ask you how long was your car, how many rooms is on your house, what kind of Bonds you had, did you have stocks? He's not interested in that. His interest, according to uh, Romans chapter 14 and verse number 12, we must all stand before God and give an account of the deeds done in our body. Galatians uh, 6 and 8, let us know, whatsoever man sow it, that shall he also reap. So if you're not sowing the right thing, you can't reap the right thing. That's why living holy is so important. See, you can't die holy unless you live holy. I thought I heard amen way off somewhere. The only way one can die holy, he or she has to first live holy. Don't hide behind these lying preachers on my way to church this morning. Here's a joker. Look like he's going to pick cotton, dressed any kind of way. I'm against folk going to church looking like bombs. Ain't no need to be lying to you. If you can do better, you ought to put on some decent clothes. This ain't no cotton field. When you go to before God, you ought to look your best. Amen. Anyway, here he only way in church, put on a cigarette. I told my wife, I said, that is the dangers of these so-called churches that will not preach against sin because they don't know what sin is. Sin is the gratification of the flesh to the neglect of the obedience of God. That's what sin is. Sin is the violation of God's law. You can't live like a devil and die like an angel. These lions, boy, we, in Mississippi, we got some of the lions that preach. The person live any kind of way, as soon as they die. Well, I can see them walking the streets of glory. I can't see that well. That's why I wear glasses. I, I, I just can't see that well. You can't you got five wives, six husbands, three girlfriends, and five sweethearts and drop dead and somebody going to heaven. What kind of heaven? Ain't no heaven for no whoremongers. You want to go to heaven, you got to clean up your act. I don't care how good they look, how they shake it to the easy way. You better leave it alone if you want to go to heaven. And I dare you to say, 
Yeah, he just talked like that because he done got old. I talk like this when I was young. I come to Philadelphia 54 years ago talking like this. If I drop dead, I want to talk.